turn the lights back on. Wow. Retro Electro Tech. When real audio ruled the world. world. Greetings once again, my fellow Earth Dwellers. This is Retro Ernest of Retro Electro Tech. And here on the bench again is the Rotel RCD 955AX compact disc player from around 1991. As mentioned in video one, the evaluation video, I pointed out that this unit came to me with a seized or stuck tray. And um, as is often the case, we're usually dealing with a worn belt and or a degraded lubricant that was factory applied to um, key areas along the uh, tray assembly's path of travel. Now, in the uh, case of this unit here, we have both a um, worn belt or stretched whatever and again not too bad in this case as well there was um, degraded factory grease within these uh, CD tray mechanisms now both situations combined are a recipe for loading trays not wanting to open wide and say ah that being said I've been in here um, slinging swabs and solvent in other words uh, I just apply a little bit of uh, the anhydrous alcohol 99% to um, a swab and as you can see these are these are quite dirty and I um, remove any remnants of uh, you know factory grease and as all of you can see I have the um, crash card of cleanliness rolled up to the scene so that I can uh, work in a um, organized and efficient manner yep I am one of them personalities and of course, all of this cleanup isn't part of the job filled with glitz, glamour, and groupies, but it's got to get done. Otherwise, um, let me point out some of the key areas within these uh, mechanisms where I will be applying lubricant and um, how much. So, let's start with this um, tray section here of the assembly. In the case of this loading tray, you can see we have these um, recessed areas here, these grooves or tracks and we have two there, two here. And what these do is facilitate the um, travel of this um, lift tray here. And you can see how it just moves up and down, up and down, okay? So nothing uh, complex there. Now, um, of course, we want to apply just a light amount of grease in these tracks here okay and there's again two on each side and the objective is obviously to promote smooth travel okay and um, you know reduce any premature wear and all that that's you know that's the objective of, of lubricant okay so um, not that it's common sense but it's common knowledge as far as lubricants go and their purpose it's to obviously uh, promote you know smooth uh, friction-free or as friction-free as possible travel of you know mechanisms gears and uh, in this case we have this uh, loading tray this drawer here that's uh, moving in and out and so you know we want to just have some uh, uh, lubricant in there and a reasonable amount to help promote all that and you know we don't want things binding up and on that note that's why we don't want to apply a, you know big globs of grease in there because it can actually counter what we're trying to achieve by making everything just way too viscous sticky and all that and again why we want to use the appropriate lubricant nothing too viscous as I, ju as I just said too thick and all that you know you wouldn't pack um, you know, wheel bearing grease or something in there and um, but anyways so that's what we want to do so again it's not anything real um, highly technical or anything but you know that's that's the objective so what I'm gonna do is just um, on my little brush here and I'll just go ahead and just uh, let me see I'll just quickly pan over I got this tripod tightened down pretty good so um, over here you know I just have my little my little tray with some grease in there I'll use a brush like this and um, yeah that's about it nothing nothing too fancy schmancy there again I'm just the type that likes to work very um, organized I don't like stuff all over the place and I like to be able to just kind of you know be efficient in, in what I'm doing here so I'll just um, apply a little grease to the uh, 
to the brush tip there and again just not a big deal I'll just kind of work it in there okay and if I get a little too much in there which this isn't by the way then I'll just go ahead and uh, you know remove a little bit onto the brush and apply it to, onto the next section and just kind of even things out so you get the gist of, of where I'm going with this so not too much and uh, let's go ahead and move on okay so here's pretty much the end result um, as you can see here again all of the um, all of the grease all the lubricant is applied nice and even okay you can see in here nice and light and and uh, even okay in there in there and then notice too the uh, the gear teeth um, along this track now this is the track that engages um, let me let me pull this other uh, part into frame here those gear teeth on the that run the length of that um, loading tray are what engage the um, the gear wheel and pulley there okay so <clears throat> so I just wanted a just a very light and evenly applied amount of grease there and you can see when I hold it sideways you can see how you can still see between the teeth real nice it's not all globbed in there once again and um, so there you go no <clears throat> no mystery there and here's that um, lift tray that drops down in here okay all right so there we go and the only other thing that I need to do to this assembly here the uh, tray and the and the uh, lift tray is drop these um, rollers back into um, where they belong right here in, t in these uh, recesses okay here and here and I'm just gonna once again just get the uh, brush apply a little bit of grease and um, apply it right in here where the uh, rollers are gonna drop down in and then I will um, move on to the next phase okay okay so these rollers are back in place here and one thing I wanted to mention is um, in regard to these uh, these grooves here these tracks along here um, I'm not gonna apply any lubrication in here directly because um, let me pan up here and zoom in to this uh, assembly here okay these guides here ride in those tracks that I pointed out okay these guides here, here, and here, okay, right in those tracks of the uh, drawer. So I will be applying some grease to these guides, and of course when I insert the drawer uh, back in the tray, um, you know, the tray, the um, tracks, the grooves that I pointed out on the um, tray will receive lubrication um, via these um, guides once I um, insert that back in so same difference but I don't really need to apply um, grease in there just to these guides good enough and um, along those lines and by the way I just have this um, tech wipe laying here just to just to cover up the laser that's all I don't want anything settling on it and I'll talk about that more in a in a moment as far as um, the laser is concerned and cleaning it and all that so anyways um what i also did was clean the um the belt guide here within this um uh, gear wheel slash pulley as well as the um pulley here on the uh, motor i don't know if, if that's showing up well but it's a it's a black pulley so it's hard to see but anyways same thing some uh, you know a swab and some solvent and just really uh, cleaned out the uh, the groove there the belt guide on both pulleys really really good because um, grease residue does work its way in over time 
uh, just with all the motion going on and all that. So, you know, and the belt too will start to, um, you know, get a little bit of, a little bit slippery and all that because of that. So it's good to get all that cleaned out. And I clean the teeth, of course, of the uh, um, gear wheel here, the pulley, and I will be applying a little bit of lubrication onto that too. So, um, oh, and also the uh, motor here. And let me let me hold that up to the. Um, let me let me just get this. Let me see here. Okay. So I'll use some, uh, you know, precision uh, machine oil, like what I have in here. It just has one of these little application needles, and. I don't have the motor clamped in right now, so let me just pull it out. I will end up applying one, just one little drop on, you know, um, onto the shaft underneath the pulley there, and then just kind of, um, you know, work that in a little bit. And that's it, though. You don't want to drop all kinds of oil down in there. Just one little drop is good enough. And. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to do that. Let me go ahead and put all this back. All right. So that's that. And, um, you know, again, you know, make sure the, the belt guides on the pulleys are, are clean. And then a little lubrication here on this um, mechanism that engages this, uh, this lever here on the back. Okay, a little lubrication here. When the, um, when the tray slides in and out, this is what um, activates a switch on the board. So, anyways, really, that's about it. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guides lubricated, get the motor lubricated, um, these gear teeth here and then start reassembling everything and of, of course obviously get the uh, belt on um in regard to the belt and let me let me grab the belt now i said earlier that um you know belts will stretch over time and all that and you might be thinking well aren't belts you know supposed to stretch and yes they are they're supposed to be elastic in nature and stretch over the pulleys but the problem is what will start happening is that when they lose their elasticity um you know they they're stretched on the pulleys obviously to hold um you know to hold tension onto the pulleys to obtain their grip you know you don't want them slipping on the pulleys hence the reason why they're stretched over the pulleys but over time when they start to lose that elasticity Obviously, they loosen up, and then they will start slipping on the pulleys because they can't um, achieve the uh, the tension around the pulleys that they once did when they were nice and elastic and were um, stretched onto the pulleys, nice and nice and taut. Okay, so that's um, you know, so that's that as far as belts go. You know, sometimes belts will just break, but sometimes they overstretch is the point, and will start slipping. So um, that's about it. So let me get everything reassembled, and then. Um, once I get everything reassembled, I will um, return with um, function testing. And if everything works okay at that point, then I will um, perform an audio test. One thing I did forget was um, in regard to lens cleaning. Now, this is something that um, you know you will find mixed reviews on, but um, there is nothing wrong with cleaning the lens if it's done right, okay? And I've heard people say, oh, well, you know, they get all panicky about it, but. Um, you know, again, like with everything, you have to know what you're doing, you know, what to use, what not to use, and um, that's what I'm going to get into. Now, um, there's nothing wrong with using, um, for example, let me get to it, a cotton swab, as long as it is a very, very clean cotton swab. And I'm going to show you what I do personally. Also, too, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with using, like, um, 99% anhydrous alcohol. Again, anhydrous because you want something that dries really, really fast. And um, also to, in my case, because I'm very comfortable uh, doing this, and I've you know, been doing it for a long time, um, I like to use a, um, let me 
actually back out just a little bit more here. I like to use a laboratory grade uh, lens cleaner. Okay, this is what is used a lot of times in, in laboratories for, um, you know, they're very, very expensive optics. And um, also, too, as a professional photographer, I've been a professional photographer for many years. I am used to cleaning optics, lenses, and very, very expensive lenses. So um, that's nothing new to me. So um, let me just go ahead and zoom in once again. And again, using a lens cleaner like that, because it doesn't necessarily dry, although that, that stuff is fast drying too, um, but it doesn't necessarily dry at the rate that, um, you know, anhydrous alcohol or something like that. But what I do is just apply no more than one or two drops to the swab, okay? And the reason why, you don't want a saturated um, swab because you don't want any... Um, moisture working its way under the under the lens and fogging things up and all that and um, when I do apply and I'm not going to uh, touch the lens right now because I've already performed this I've already cleaned the lens you'll just kind of very gently just roll the swab across the lens and when you do so um, you want to just carefully stabilize it in this case this lens um, rotates um, within this um, you know within this groove here it just kind of rotates around so I just very carefully stabilize it with my finger um, you know you don't want to press down on it and I'll just kind of rotate the uh, swab along the um, along the lens lightly you do not want to press down and apply a lot of pressure just very lightly and then with the other side with the dry side you can remove any um, now and and again there's not going to be a lot of moisture on there because i only use like i said one or two drops give it a little time to kind of soak in i just want to lightly uh, dampen the uh surface just very lightly and this stuff does dry fast that lab grade lens cleaner okay but um perhaps not as fast as the anhydrous alcohol but very very fast nonetheless and one important thing to mention too what i do personally and let me back off just a little bit is I use one of these um, these little blowers, okay? And before I even clean the lens, and this, this is the same with my um, camera lenses because I have some very expensive uh, lenses with some, you know, with very uh, delicate coatings and all that. So what I do is, like with any lens, um, dust and other particulates can settle on the lens and you do not want to rub the swab across if there's particulates or dust that has settled on the lens and risk um, introducing fine scratches onto the lens. So what I always do is you know, give the lens just a blast of air to remove any particulates and then I do what I do. And also too, another thing that I have the habit of doing and it's just a habit that I've developed when I'm using a swab. I'll do the same thing. I'll blow the dust off and I'll just aim it at the swab and do the same thing on the swab because um, I keep mine in a container with a lid, but you know, dust can get settle on swabs too. So I just like to blow off any excess dust off of all the stuff before I apply, um, you know, before I apply anything to the lens and, and all that. I, it's just a good measure to utilize and there you go off to the races so i just wanted to explain that in regard to lens cleaning and uh you know different people have different approaches to it like i said you can use an anhydrous alcohol i've used it before again just a drop or two let it soak into the swab and anhydrous will uh, clean any um any smudge or any any impurities off the um off the surface of the lens and dry almost instantaneously but again no, you know, don't apply any any unneeded pressure. Stabilize the, you know, stabilize the optical pickup, and just, again, lightly just kind of rotate as you swipe across, and then just dry with the other side, and uh, blow off any dust, whatever the case. So there you have it. Now let me get everything assembled, like I said, and um, start testing everything. Okay, so everything is obviously reassembled and I have a test CD loaded up. Um, kind of funny how this half of the uh, chassis here, the 
front plate is painted and this half isn't. I guess the manufacturer saved a little paint. Maybe they were in a hurry or something, but anyways, uh, just something I wanted to point out. But uh, everything's working fine. Um, let me just demonstrate that it does play. Crossover phase tracking test to 15 kilohertz in phase. Okay, and let me go ahead and uh, just demonstrate the um, loading tray. Okay, so that's opening just fine. Let me back off just a little bit. Okay, and I'll do that a few times. Okay. Let me do it again. Okay. I'm just going to do it several times here. Okay, there's no belt slippage. Everything seems to be doing just fine. Okay, so that's uh, looking good. The only other thing I have to do is um, I still have a little bit of cleaning of the uh, face plate and you know all that stuff, but um, this little uh, plate here for the CD drawer, um, it has a, a post um, on the other side. There's one of these posts that is um, busted off, so this thing doesn't really um, fasten on to the front of the uh, drawer very well. So I don't have the missing uh, piece, the piece that broke off the post that uh, busted off. I don't have it, so I'm going to have to fashion up something and figure out um, right there is where it busted off. So I'm going to have to probably get a little piece of uh, plastic and just kind of um, file it into shape and um, attach it with some two-part epoxy or something really strong there and just just get something that will work so this thing will slot into place and, and hold. Um, so I'm going to be thinking about that in the next uh, day or so and just coming up with something to uh, you know, rig up there that'll work. And otherwise, as you as you all saw, everything is working good like it should. So um, I'll just do the rest of it off camera and uh, get it back to its uh, human. So other than that, like I always say, uh, you know, thank you for watching. And um, excuse me kicking the uh, <laughs> tray that I have the camera tripod on. But anyways, peace, love, rock and roll, and of course, Vintage Audio. Till next time. This is a poor man's shoe production. <laughs>